All right, so I'm going to film the third one of these. Um, this one's a little bit crooked, too. This one is way it's mounted. These ones are all like really, really dingy. They look, I think they're really old. Um, the other one didn't really look that old, but then again, I spilled ink all over it and I had to clean it off, so I might have not realized that now that I cleaned it off, it's lighter. Yeah. Let's start kind of. From there. See how it runs. It's pretty wild. It's six volts. This thing is like boing, 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 boing. boing. Monster stroke. I can't even believe it's running. Look at that. That much of a gap. Right now, I got less than a dime. But it's hitting pretty hard. Interesting. I even notice that 68% duty, that 90 hertz is actually pretty good. I think this one looks like uh, uh, this one here. Um, let me get this one here. I don't know if you guys remember the one yesterday. It's really hard to look at it from here. Um, the perspective kind of looks funny because you're focusing on this piece underneath the back where it's actually not straight, anyways. Um, let me see something. They give it a little rub down with the rag. It looks just really dirty. I just wanted to see if it actually like polishes it up a little bit. Okay, anyway. Uh, I think this one's just nicer looking. All the way around, but anyway, the uh, see how fast I can get it to run.
So at 52, 53 percent duty in front of that 88 with a huge gap. This would pack some color. I still think it would probably line okay too, but we're going to get this thing moved about here. So this one seems to run a little different than the rest of them. It's uh, 99 hertz at 59% uh, duty. Hitting pretty good. Got an actual decent sized stroke on it. It's almost kind of a long stroke. can do. We got to do 103 at 58% duty. Um, it's about as fast as it's gonna run. It's back there ways. That front spring is so damn soft on these. So um, I think it was this one I got. Uh, I, I changed everything. I think I got this one running fast. Er. Yeah, 120. Hundred and twenty, but see, this is a different spring. This is off of those uh, Spalding Puma copies, and it's a stiff, thick front spring. Let me see if I can like uh, give you guys a comparison. See that right there? Um. And then the, these ones, um, so these have like uh, really thick back springs on them. Let's see what the boys this fucker running up. They get really thick back springs that are actually uh, thicker than that one. This one's running 90 at 52. It needs to be messed with also. What I usually like to do when I, I, I tune them, I watch my meter and I bring my meter up to 50% um, duty. I don't worry about the speed. Um, because if the duty is wrong, the speed's not going to matter. Because if it's not at 50%, then the needle could be spending too much time in the skin. But 
we can figure out other ways to make it run faster. But, uh, you need the duty to be pretty close to 50 to 55. So, this one here. This one here is different too. The uh, coils are soldered, and then the other ones are crimped. But I mean, I would say you know, for the nine dollars that these were, uh, they're pretty good. Um, I probably uh, I was gonna have this one replaced. We can visually look at it and tell that it's cocked to the side a little bit, but it runs pretty good. So I'll have to sit and look at them all really close later on. But I think that I'll probably just uh, call Amazon and tell them to just go ahead and charge me for the replacement. I'm going to keep it. That's what you do. Is yeah. Sorry, I'm tired. Um, I ordered a replacement for that one. Uh, so, when I got this one, I was really impressed, so I ordered another one, and I started to look at it, and I started to notice that it was a little bit crooked. And so I just went ahead and ordered a replacement. And I figured um, I'd play around with it for a while, and then, uh, you know, see what the replacement looked like. Well, it's not really that bad, honestly, and I don't even think I can really show you. Oh, it's just kind of like it's off that way. When you look at this one on the back, this piece looks straight. When you look at these other ones, it's kind of the other way around. So it doesn't look straight. Looks like it comes in. So I don't think any of them are really that far off. So I don't know. You got three really cool brass machines for about $30. And you can polish these things up and you can take the name off where it says tattoo. I mean, but you can see this one looks different because it's been cleaned. I spilled ink on it. In fact, you can see. I mean, focus, focus, focus. You can see where the ink got underneath. I spilled the ink and it went all over the frame and into the coils. Um, so I had to, you know, clean it for quite a while. And in the process of doing it, it kind of gave it more of a uh, that coppery look. And they all kind of have a little bit of a point right here. And so they kind of want to dig into your hand there, but. I think these are pretty damn cool for the nine, ten bucks, and the coils are really good. See, this one is got the crimp on it. Now, I like it when you get them like this because it's so much easier for me to tell that I'm dealing with copper wire. Because um, if it's like this one and they're soldered, what they do is they um, they they take the uh, if you notice here, you see it's kind of flat on one side. Well, they'll take the wire and they'll put it on like something flat that, and they'll and they'll just solder it. But you can solder copper clad aluminum if you're careful. So basically, um, this could be copper clad aluminum, but you won't know because it's soldered. 
because you can't see the center of the core of the wire. With these, you can see it. It's really obvious. Focus, focus, focus. You can see the copper. And if I have one here, if I, let me see if I have one here that's not, so I can show you guys what I'm talking about. But usually if the coils look like these kind here, um, I'm looking to see, I think these coils actually look like they might even be a little bit different from a bobbin. Um, I'm trying to find a machine that has uh, aluminum wire. Okay. Right here is one. And you might see like a very slight amount of copper on the outside of it, but you'll see the center is silver. And so that's why I like it when they're like this, because then I can tell right away what I'm dealing with. You you can't go off of the color of the the coating on the wire. That doesn't mean anything. And if it's copper clad, it will look copper. But when you cut the ends off, it will look silver because the center of the wire is made out of aluminum. Because they just have a process where they're able to take wire that's aluminum and coat it with copper. And it, it still works. It's just that it's just not, you know, going to act the same as copper coils. So, uh, I used to really worry about it, you know, and now it's like, I've got a couple of machines that actually run really good, and this one does actually too, um, that have aluminum wire, but I definitely try to avoid it. It's not something that you want to go out and look for on purpose. Um, but, yeah, they just, uh, they run differently. So, anyway, I just wanted to make a video of all three of these things, and, um, yeah, I, I don't know. Um, I should have another machine, um, I should be getting the, uh, Mickey Sharps Hybrid Clone in the mail, I don't know, like in a couple hours today or something, assuming that the, uh, postal lady doesn't do anything crazy. And then a bunch of the other stuff that I ordered on eBay, uh, I ordered um, a, uh, a T-Dial clone, and it never shipped. So uh, on Monday, I ordered two machines on eBay. They were really, really cheap, $5.99 each. And what they would do is they uh, send a tracking number, and then they uh, print a shipping label, but then they don't ever send anything to the postal office. So... What I think it is is that the uh, the one particular machine it sells out all the time, so they didn't have any in stock, um, and instead of just saying that, they just uh, said that um, you know they make excuses that the postal service is slow or something or whatever, and you know that's not the case because they just they're waiting for the next shipment to show up and then they'll they'll send it out to you and they're not going to tell you that. I mean, because here they are selling you a five-dollar, you know, tattoo machine. So they, they, they don't want to uh, give you a discount because it's already pretty cheap. So I ordered two more. I ordered uh, um, a clone of the uh, Mickey Sharp's contraption, and it looked like that shipped out about 24 hours after I ordered it. And I ordered a T dial from another seller. These are all in Gresham, Oregon on eBay. If you look them up, Gresham, Oregon. And they're all selling the same machines. And then some of us seller will have um, a 30-day return on the machine. And some will have a 60-day return. And some will have a 30-day return. And it says, uh, buyer pays return shipping. you got to watch out for those. Um, especially when the buyer is based out of China. Because then they're going to try and get you to send it to China. So... They have a warehouse in Gresham, Oregon, and you order from there, and if it comes from there, you'll probably get it, you know, in five to ten days, but if they don't have any in stock, they're not going to say they don't, they'll just, you'll end up ordering, and you'll have to wait until they get it from another warehouse, or get it from China, 
So right now I'm, I'm waiting on that crap. So we'll have some videos on those, and uh, we'll we'll talk about the uh, eBay deal and you know what to look for when you're trying to find one. Because uh, if you order from the wrong seller, you could get screwed, and then you sit around for a month trying to get your money back. So you don't want to do that. Anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, don't forget to hit the like button on these videos. Because, uh, you know, what that does is it helps the algorithm on YouTube. If you don't hit the like button, you know, hit the dislike button, but do something. You know, uh, leave a comment, you know, it helps the channel grow. Thanks for watching.